Welcome to the climb! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. Leverage is the power to act effectively. It's a strategic advantage. More important than that in plain English, it's what you're gonna need to get ahead as a songwriter, to get ahead as an artist, in the music business today. It means you're coming in with a track record. It means you're coming in with results, not potential. That's the way the industry is working now. And that's why we called this podcast, The Climb. Creating leverage in the music business, C-L-I-M-B. See what we did there? Awesome. Who came up with that? It's my, my co-host and my good friend, Mr. Brent Baxter. Brent is an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Antebellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And Brent helps songwriters like you turn pro by revealing how you write like a pro, do business like a pro, and on the regular, he connects you with the pros so that you can get a shot and get your foot in the door. You can find Brent at songwritingpro.com. Once again, that's songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Twinell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. Daredevil has created over 25 national TV opportunities for their indie artists. And they do this by making them discoverable. They've also created multiple tour opportunities. And through the power of digital marketing data, they've attracted a number of investors for their clients. The investors are their money people, y'all. And investors like numbers because numbers can't lie because numbers don't talk. You can find Johnny at daredevilproduction.com. That's production, singular, no S. And there's no S because there is no other Johnny D. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing well. Doing well. I've been talking all morning. So have you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talking all morning. So I'm glad this is your episode. I can coast a little bit. I'd be your amen section. I have been, and this is in no way, shape or form a, a complaint. It, it, it's a blessing, but I have been up to my proverbial armpits and alligators in video post-production because in the last three months, we have had more conversations and more artists pony up and pay to really f- full force head on go into digital marketing. I'm not talking about social media now. I'm talking about digital marketing like ads mm. to promote their brand, to get them and their art in front of more eyeballs. In the last three months, we've had more of that than we've had in the last three years. Awesome. Well, I expect performance reviews here on the show. Oh, yeah. In the future, I want to hear about how this goes. Oh, yeah. It's exciting. And it's, you know, super creative and it, it takes forever because it's <laughs> <laughs> like I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm right around the corner from needing to hire like a video guy. <laughs> or a it's video super girl. creative. <laughs> and it's really tedious. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yes. Like, I need to be like, no, this is how I want it to look. Now, go help oh, me out. <laughs> I got to make another deal. <laughs> I'm the fishing guy. Yeah. I'm the but idea hey, guy. Go. Yeah. Today, we are going to cover congregations. Congregations. Something that's near and dear to your heart, sir. Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Church of yes. Christ, Nazarene. Yes. Baptist and all that. All right. Well, that's good. Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything. But before we get to that. What kind of congregation you got? We got both kinds, Southern and Baptist. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we get to that, let's take care of some business. The Climb Podcast is proud to partner with Disc Makers, who have been supporting indie musicians before indie music was even a thing. When you're ready to make CDs, DVDs, vinyl, or distribute your music and videos with customized USBs, DiscMakers.com is the only place you need to go. And that's D-I-S-C-Makers.com. And while you're there, click on the Guides and Resources tab and download some of their excellent free guides. They've just revised and expanded their home studio handbook, which has a ton of great advice and information for newbies and studio veterans. You can find them online at www.discmakers.com or give them a call at 800-468-9353. That's 800-468-9353. And Johnny, I wonder how many people we lost because we didn't really tell them it's not literally about church congregations. We just went right into an ad for disc makers. I wonder <laughs> if you're still here. Um, thank you. And I'm sorry if you well, were actually, well, remember, who's, remember who's serving it up. <laughs> yes. I have. A, yes. You might be disappointed or happy, but I have a feeling this is not literally about church congregations. That's right. Hey, uh, real quick. Did you get the email from Disc Makers? I get emails from Disc Makers. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. I know well, they share. It's like a regular like, sales email that they have. But I mean, okay. just straight up, guys, like two, maybe three years ago, I'm in the studio and this dude comes in with another dude who has 
these like ridiculously cool custom USBs, right? And so if you don't know what a mm-hmm. USB is, like a little thumb drive, right? That you can mm-hmm. put like, I mean, now that you can put, I mean, probably put a terabyte on a USB if you want, you know, a huge mm-hmm. amount of information. But what I mean by customized, they're customized for the artist, right? And so he had something that he did for Apple Records with the Beatles and it was a die cast metal green apple. And when mm-hmm. you pulled the stem of the apple up, there's the USB, right? <laughs> yeah. He had another one that he did for Bob Dylan. It comes in this like really killer like wood case and you unclick the case and you open it up. It's a harmonica case, right? So it's the size huh. of harmonica. And you open up the wood box, dude, like with a pinch and the thing and there's a harmonica in there. You open up the harmonica and inside the harmonica is the USB. I mean, this makers is doing this. It's like James Bond stuff. Dude, it's so cool. There's a USB in here. Yeah, I know, dude. It's yeah. like you customize for your brand, right? Mm-hmm. They had one for Dean Martin. If I told you Dean Martin, like, what would be the first thing that would pop into your head? It's like in a some sort of cocktail glass exactly, or something. Exactly, dude, exactly. <laughs> the martini glass, right? Yeah. It's got an olive in it, but you pull the olive out and it's flat. It's not like a real glass. Yeah. Like circumference-wise. Okay. It's flat, you know, so it looks okay. like, like a from 2D. the side, it looks, yeah, like a yeah. 2D, like martini glass. And you, you pull out the olive, measure. <laughs> I'm mean, doing it's yeah. it's brilliant. Like they're doing this now. I, I mean, I haven't had a yeah. chance to call Dan and tell him like how cool this is, but that is awesome. Like that is you guys got to check this stuff out. It's so yeah. Cool. So the USB has can have music, pictures, video, all kinds. It's of It's just stuff. a hard drive. Yeah, that is yeah. Links, but it has probably comes loaded with the artist stuff. So it's a value add. Like this is why you want this exactly. And you can have so like for me when I was talking with this guy like three years ago, I mean, I was kind of freaking out about it because I was like, hey. That would, I mean, we didn't have the marketing engine running like we do now, but that would be interesting because you could upload, you could, it could be a constant repository, right? For whatever content that artist that you come out with as an artist, they can upload it and keep it on that custom USB thing. And I know mm-hmm. this about, I'm not so sure about women on this, but I know this for sure about men, 100% of all men. If you give us something hard and shiny, we won't throw it away. <laughs> We won't throw it away. We've got every trophy we ever earned. We've got every, like, Uh if you give us, like, a a plaque that says you're, like, the employee of the day, and you put that Mm -hmm. on a rock, but it's got, like, a hard and shiny metal thing screwed into it, we'll keep it forever. So if you do hard and shiny USBs, you're going to get 100% of the men, like, to to never throw it away. (laughs) And that's got your logo on there, and it's right there sitting on somebody's shelf, yeah. Super creative, what they did. And I saw a bunch of these with um, disc makers, and I just thought, man, that is awesome. So you guys got to check that out. I mean, I'm not trying to shill for them. Obviously, we did an ad for them, but I was, like, just genuinely excited about that. I got to dig into it a little more and see what the capabilities are. Anyway, how you been? I've been good. I've been good. So just – Ready to see where you're going with this. I'm kind of curious. Okay, well, real quick, um, join the climb mm-hmm. community. Uh, if you haven't asked to be let in, we let everybody in who asks. Subscribe to the podcast, leave a five star rating and review, and share it with somebody. If it's working for you, if you found some value in this, tell somebody else about it. That's why we're doing this. That's the best mm-hmm. way that you can compliment us is to help us grow our audience and grow our congregation. Right? Uh oh, this is a little foreshadowing. What? Oh, what? what? So obviously here, Brent, if I, uh, let's just get into it. I mean, what's the first thing you think of if I say congregation? Well, I think of a, uh, well, of course, I think of a church congregation. So I'm thinking a group of people that believe similar things. They've congregated willingly. Yeah. Now, let's, um, let's go further. When I first said at the very beginning of this episode, I said, we're going to learn about congregations. You remember what your comment? You had a string of comments. <laughs> I started listing off all these di- different denominations, right? Right. So, but what's the big umbrella? Uh, religious or maybe within those congregations, Christianity. Christianity, right. And then, then there's like subsects, right? Or, or you get mm-hmm. more granular with it. Baptist, Southern Baptist, um, right. Nazarene. Methodist. Methodist. Catholic. Catholic. All this stuff. Yeah. yeah. So Mormon, you know, so, <clears throat> and then other, uh, other religions, right? You know, Jewish, mm-hmm. so there's Muslim, there's um, mm-hmm. Buddhist, there, it's, it's never ending. So these... What a, what's a congregation? A congregation has similar likes and similar beliefs. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's why they congregate. Right, exactly. Right? They're not, it's a noun, it's a verb. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's why they congregate, because they have similar likes and similar beliefs. And I want, you know, the purpose of today is I really want to dig into this a little bit and understand, help you guys understand the power of a congregation, Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are still a little vague, foggy, 
on getting their head around, you know, what does culture mean? Like, what is, what are we selling as artists? What, how are we going to make a living as an artist? What, you know, how are we going to, and, and this filters, if you're a songwriter, don't tune out mm-hmm. because if you ain't the artist, then your artist needs to know about this. Right. And this, right, is, yeah. this is what's going to help you make a living too. You know, I mean, just in the shorthand here, why does, um, why is it that the Super Bowl can command the amount of money for a 30 second ad that they do? A massive amount of attention. Attention, meaning they have a big, huge audience. Audience, right. And that's a congregation of people Mm -hmm. that are interested in the same thing, the outcome of that specific game. Or the outcome of the commercials. Well, well, they turned into like two shows now, right? So you can't leave TV. It's brilliant. Yes. Uh, It's absolutely brilliant. And this is what what I want to talk about because the the difference is lost. I remember, I I don't, I, I I still offer it like on the, website. I've taken it off the squeeze page, but you know, like three years ago, I I wrote a book, the the Twitter book. It was a free download. Mm -hmm. This was designed as a tool to create a relationship. I'm going to give you something of value. You're going to give me your email address. And then if you continue to like the content Mm -hmm. to add value to your life, you're not going to unsubscribe. Right. When I first did that, I remember my mom saying, you know, this is a great book. What are you going to sell it for? And I'm like, well, I mean, I, I did put it on Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. And, and um, I did, you know, I would sell like probably $50 a month with it, but I was giving it away. And she's like, what are you giving it away for? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, cause you know, so I can create a relationship. And she just was looking at me like, I, I've taught you nothing. <laughs> 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 she, she didn't understand, you know, and, yeah. and it's the way things used to be versus the way right. they are now. Right. So I want to just kind of dig into this in terms of a congregation and get everybody to kind of understand this. So prior to the internet, it was hard for massive amounts of people to congregate together. We're mm. limited by a few things, like what? Geography. Yeah, location. Sure. Yeah. And the ability to communicate, right? Mm. So you have your church that's in your town, but mm. you didn't really have an easy way to connect with the, let's say, your, what, what denomination are you, Brent? So I grew up going to a Baptist church. Okay. So if you're a Baptist, you did not really have an easy way to congregate with other Baptists that were, say, an hour away, just one hour away. No. Unless you, unless you have your... a big fair or some sort of big festival or what do you guys do, like bake sales? We don't. We're pretty <laughs> decentralized. So we're like, whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got the Bible, whatever y'all do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're not, we don't have like big conclaves or anything like that. That I'm aware of. I mean, but if we do, it'd be in Nashville. <laughs> well, so, you know, I, I think that... Lifeway. But, but it was difficult for them to be able to connect, should they want to, right? Should there right, be a yeah. message that needs to get out that's a different than <clears throat> your normal daily or weekly sermon kind of thing? Yes, because, you know, some denominations are more hierarchical, you know, like Catholicism or... I'm not going to go down that road because I'll, I'll probably say things that are not correct. But Don't other denominations are more hierarchical. <laughs> they may be more like, hey, this is coming from the you know regional office kind of thing. Now, are there different size congregations in Christianity? Oh, for sure. Who has the biggest? Well, the preachers or the pastors, the leaders, mm-hmm. whatever you, know, you want to call them. The, the biggest ones, how is it that they've amassed that size of a congregation? Why, why, is it, why do they have a huge congregation versus your local church in your local yeah. faded map dot town right well there are not that many people in the faded map dot town there are churches in texas that have a membership role that are probably bigger than the town i grew up in there you go and and how about bigger than that well yeah well i mean south korea you have hundreds of thousands of people at a church but i mean what about like Falwell? well he had a university how did he get so big that he could have a university communication i guess I mean, I don't, well, I don't he's follow on a bigger up on platform, that dude, but, right? He's on TV. Yeah, he got on TV. Got right? on TV. TV preachers, yeah. So he had something to say, right? Mm-hmm. And he had a bunch of people that were following him. And then he found more people that were following him. Why? Because he got on a platform and was saying and preaching his gospel, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The gospel, but it's from him and people like the way it was interpreted, obviously. Right. right? And with all those big guys, you know, like them, hate them. Some of them are good people. Some of them aren't. Right. I'm not here to just debate that. I'm just talking about the size. So your Instagram feed, your Twitter feed, feed, your Facebook feed, they're congregations of people. They're mm-hmm. people that have congregated on your platform. 
right? So here's another way to spin this. My favorite card game, which is really weird, okay? From okay. Wisconsin, grew up in the Midwest, and it's a game called Sheep's Head. And this is okay. very much of a Wisconsin thing. Okay. It's originally a German thing, which is why it's a Wisconsin thing, because there's a heavy German population in Wisconsin. And uh, the card game is, if you ever played Euchre, it's like Euchre, only way more strategy and like way more screwed up. So I'm not even going to bother trying to explain. The only Euchre I know is Bob. Okay. <laughs> and it's been, it's been around since the 1700s. Like I know my dad's got a story. He was a Marine. Let me rephrase. He is a Marine. He's just retired. There's no ex- retired. such thing as an ex-Marine. Right. Uh, right. And he'll correct you every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when he was on his way over to Vietnam, he was on a, on a Navy boat. They had some free time. And so he just stands up in the middle of commissary one time. And he's like, who here's from Wisconsin? A bunch of people raise their hand. He's like, sheep's head. Yeah, no, just like that. They had like two different tables of sheep's head going. You know, I mean, that's like yeah. our family gets together and plays that all the time. It's a big time we laugh. It's it's very strategic and competitive. So when I was young and I was just out of high school, I, I worked part time for my my dad's company on breaks. We had two 15 minute breaks, one in the morning, one in the afternoon and a lunch break. All we do is play sheep's head. We'd have lunch okay. brought in. And so it, we'd have turbo sheeps. So we had two decks going so that while one deck was getting shuffled, another hand was being dealt so we could get as many hands as we could in the 15-minute break that we had, right? Or okay. an hour break. And we had a blast doing it. But there were thousands of people all across Wisconsin that were playing sheep's head at any given time. But it's hard to be close to everyone in that congregation. We all congregate around the same common interests. Mm-hmm. But we're in Delavan, Wisconsin, which is southeastern by Lake Geneva in between Chicago and Milwaukee. Three hours away, there's Wausau, Wisconsin. There's a bunch of people playing up there, but we don't know. Yeah. Right? So people can't connect as well. Uh, and there's a bunch of people playing it in Germany where it started and all over the world. Now we can congregate over a common interest like Sheep's Head. Now with Sheep's Head, there's tournaments that are online. There's people mm-hmm. playing from Wausau in the same game, from Wausau, from Delavan, from Germany at the same yeah. time, you know, yeah. making it easier to congregate. And, you know, as a marketer, if I had a product that Sheep's Head players would love, mm-hmm. or if I was an artist with a song that Sheep's Head players might like, <laughs> yeah. Or if I was a songwriter, you know. Wooly bully? Yeah. If I was would a... That, <laughs> wool, wooly, would that be a song that... I'm, I'm really trying because I don't know anything about this game. But anyway, go ahead. It doesn't matter, though. See, the point is... Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. So, yeah. Or let's say you're an artist that also loves playing Sheep's Head. You know, put your game here. Put your interest here. Put maybe you're a songwriter that's also a Baptist and you want to get with other songwriters. It's a very super easy and inexpensive way to connect with people. Think about... What's one of the things, I, I, we don't need to argue one way or the other about the education, but you graduated from uh, Arkansas. Arkansas State. Yeah. yeah. Right. So Go Red Wolves. Woo Pig, right? No, well, actually, my sister graduated from Woo Pig. I graduated from Go Red Wolves. Oh, Go Red Wolves. Okay. So I went to Arkansas State. So one of the biggest benefits of college, and I got a lot of comments about college, I'm not going to go down that road, but one of the biggest benefits and undeniable benefits is the congregation of it. Yes. The relationships. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, we've touched on this before in previous episodes with uh, with my ex-wife. We're still friends. We, you know, we would travel when we were married. It doesn't matter where we were. We'd run in. She went to NYU mm-hmm. for, for film school. She's a TV producer now. We would run into somebody. And when it came out that they were from NYU, all of a sudden it was like, oh, hey, well, come on in. Yeah. Come on. What? What's going on? You really? Oh, well, we got the super double secret private party that nobody knows about, but you're from NYU. Come on in. Here's the secret handshake, you know? Or yeah. like, I'm talking like in Italy. We were in Italy and that was how I'm just like, everywhere we go, we run into something. We were on our honeymoon in, in Mexico, in, in Puerto Vallarta. And she ends up with somebody. Oh yeah. Did you have to? Oh yeah. I had that teacher too. Oh my God. That's so great. Like, oh, we need to get together. Like it was friends wherever you go, just instantly. Yeah. As a artist, when I toured, we were down in Florida where we did most of our touring. And I remember our light guy, Boehner, was our LD, was dating this girl from Jacksonville. And her parents, like we were there, I think, on tour. We met her parents. He's a doctor, a uh, dermatologist, uh, the nicest people you ever met. When they found out that we were from the Midwest, mm-hmm. you, guys are from, you guys are from Wisconsin, you're from the Midwest? Yeah. Salt of the earth, they were from the Midwest. Mm-hmm. salt of the earth, right? You know, you need to come. What are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? Well, actually, we're not playing for Thanksgiving, but we don't have time in that case or, or the money to go home. You know, well, yeah. you're coming here. We got three different turkeys, five different kinds of things, and three years in a row. We're going to play some sheep's head? <laughs> <No. Eggs and turkeys? laughs> yeah. So, I mean, they, they just, you know, we, we would sing a few songs, sing for our mm-hmm. supper, 
and going to enjoy <laughs> yeah. like a really great Thanksgiving with these really amazing people. And it all happened because of one thing, because they understood the congregation that we were from. And they liked yeah. that congregation. Because mm-hmm. the Midwest, that's a congregation. Yeah. Okay. The South, it's a congregation. Mm-hmm. New York, it's a congregation. East Coast. Jersey. I mean, yeah. How many, I mean, you got the, you know, hip hop, East Coast, West Coast thing. That was, a, I don't know if it's still a thing, but it was a thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you had, you know, Texas country. It's, it's own Texas. planet. Yeah. Like, golly. <laughs> Yeah, it's you its know? own planet. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, we used to be a country, a whole country. <laughs> That's right. That's right. There's six yeah. different flags for the state of Texas. I think I learned that from, from a friend of mine, <laughs> Susan Gigatone, I think. So, and think about that. Like, Texas is its own congregation. It's such a tight congregation, and it's such a big congregation that there are artists that most people listening to this podcast haven't ever heard of who are making seven figures a year. Yeah. They're famous in Texas making great livings, and you don't even mm-hmm. know who they are. Yeah. Wow. Right. Power yeah. of a congregation. Mm-hmm. The power of a congregation. There are congregations for absolutely everything. Yeah. Everything. Everything. I joke. Uh, this is, of course, I've got a little edge on my jokes because that's my job as the devil on, <laughs> okay. on, on your left shoulder. Right. But I'll tell right. some of my clients, I'm like, look, if you come to me and you tell me that your music is going to, you know, is, is going to relate to pale, young, Asian boys under the age of 16 with bad skin and one leg who've been sexually abused, we can find that group. I'm not telling you, <laughs> yeah. how, I'm not, I don't know how big the universe is going to be, but we can right. find them online. There, mm-hmm. There's a congregation for them, right. you know, for everything, for everything. And so when you're talking about, everybody's frustrated. I, nobody wants to hear my music. Nobody, I'm just, I, I don't know anybody in the, I don't have any connections. I don't have any money. I don't blah, blah, blah. It's, man, it's so easy to yeah. find somebody that's going to respond to you as an artist, to find mm-hmm. somebody that's going to respond to the particular subject matter of a song that you just wrote. Maybe because it's edgy and these people like edgy and sarcasm. You can find congregations for sarcasm. Yes, you can. Just had that conversation. It's all Twitter. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and politics, right? And politics, right. Um, Cody Webster is um, our interim digital marketing manager here now that Lexi left. And we're having lots of discussions, as you can imagine, getting his arms around everything that's happening here, brand new interns coming in, accounts to take care of, blah, blah, blah. That's one of the things I said, these guys, this particular group, this client over here, they like funny. They like a Mm -hmm. little bit of an edge, a little bit of sarcasm. Why don't you just go join five different groups of, go find five different humor groups Mm -hmm. online. And join that. That's where we're going to find some content for them, you know, and then yeah. we can, we can repurpose that content, maybe take a really funny quote that we didn't think of and put it on an image of them or on their mm-hmm. logo or just share it. Right. Right. Power of a congregation once again. Okay. So I have a question for you, Brent. Okay. Name three subjects that you've written a song about. Okay. I mean, broad subject, love, you know, or you could say small town church, and small town church and heaven. Throw out three. Small town church, heaven. Okay. Okay. Now, name three specific pieces of furniture that you've added in a lyric. Specificity. But what are the three most specific things that maybe you're most proud of in a song? They don't have to be in any relation to the three that you just mentioned. Spork. Spork. Put spork in a lyric and Randy Travis cut it. Okay. Dang it. Although he changed it to fork, but whatever, Randy. Um, <laughs> That's on an episode. I don't know what number it is, but you can get that whole story. Like, and I think it's right, 30 yeah. ep- the first 30 episodes. <laughs> that is. Uh, the word see. spork is in the title, though. I know that. You can find it. It is. I think it is. Yeah. Um, spork. Let's see. What's another interesting thing I put in there? Man, I put so many words in so many songs. I mean, you know, you, I mean, you got all your truck stuff. You know, so okay, truck. What else? Truck and uh, let's see, spork truck and church pew, church pew. Okay, now I want you to share three. I'm I'm interviewing you, Brent. Okay, (laughs) Um, yes, apparently. I mean, you you didn't know you're gonna have this much work to do, you thought you weren't gonna do a whole lot of talking, which most people think when they come around me, and I understand. (laughs) So, give me three different. Let me rephrase. I want three of your most favorite interests aside from your kids and family. Oh, they wouldn't have made the top three anyway. It's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just kidding. It depends on the day. Okay, Arkansas Razorback football. Okay. Comic book movies. 
and what else? Politics. Okay. So I'm writing these down. There, I think everybody's starting to smell the barbecue here, where we're going with this, right? Every oh, single so answer that you just gave me, there are probably, there's, there's at least 10, if not hundreds of different congregations of people that orbit around each one of these subjects that I just had you name off in less than two minutes. Mm -hmm. Small town. <laughs> yeah. So what other sub, so we got Christianity and then we got Baptists and then we got mm -hmm. Methodists and then we got, you know, there's, there's under the, so under the small town, what are some other congregations that happen within a small town? I mean, where are the small towns from? Like Texas small town, you know? There you go. What, what do small town people do is versus big city people? Oh, I mean, mudding, cow tipping, church on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. barbecue, <laughs> cruise in the square. Yeah. Dirt roads. Barbecue. Yeah. See, yeah. See, see, does it start to sound like a country lyric right now? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Pretty generic one, but that's all right. I'm going off the top of my head. Right, because I mean, we're not adding there. It's not a red truck. It's not, you know, by, right, by yeah. Julie's house. It's, but, but it's, it's the congregations. But here's where you can find the people that are interested in what you're interested in. The ag supply store. <clears throat> there you go, right? <laughs> what is that? Uh, tra tractor, and tractor supply? Tractor supply company, yeah. Some uh, during the spring, they got ducklings or chickens. You can go, go look at some chicken dude or, 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 or what are the, the yeah i got the little ducks and the chicks the chicks yeah yeah, yeah that, that's fun okay so here's a country story for you real quick so uh, like, i like who was this guy that i knew or a friend of a friend or whatever small town and basically you know would you get you know medicine for like his horses and stuff penicillin and different stuff and was talking to the guy i was like you know this is the same stuff you know like a doctor would prescribe for you right it's like the same it's penicillin you just got to get the dosage right so when that guy would get sick he would just go and shoot up his own <laughs> from his, like his horse feet <laughs> yeah. his horse. he'd go to the ag supplies vet <laughs> yeah kind of stuff and be like can i get some of the penicillin yeah not for nothing i do that was i do the opposite of that with scooter like if you i go if I, meds <laughs> yeah like if he gets if he gets antibiotics if i get it from the vet it's more expensive so i'm just like what is this and i call my sister who just i mean it helps to have a doctor in the family i'm like hey prescribe right. this for me she's like okay <laughs> <laughs> and then I get it a scooter and I get it at Walmart. It's cheaper. <laughs> there you go. So anyway. Okay. So small town. So you said church, you're Baptist, uh -huh. you said heaven. We can talk and have a deep conversation about heaven, can't we? Mm -hmm. We've got something to talk like about. It. Lots of different, um, yep. you know, colorful thoughts, feelings, emotions, ways that, that we could connect if I just met you on the street or mm -hmm. if I was, you know, talking to you on Twitter or Instagram or something, right? Yeah. Spork. What do we attribute to Spork? KFC. KFC for sure. Fried chicken. Coleslaw. Coleslaw. Mm, biscuits. Yeah. I mean, so you see how like, all of a sudden there's this Possibly people. best invention ever. So I had the PR firm that we use for my rock and roll clients is up in Philly. And the guy's name is Chip Ruggieri and his wife, Jen, kind of like famous, like in her own right. She's like a, like a really high end. She was, she would, they were down here for Judas Priest because they're doing PR for Judas Priest. And she's a a tour publicist, but she's also like a makeup artist, like a big make, like her client list is ridiculous. Like, you know, everybody, okay. you know, everybody, I don't care where you're from, you know who they are. So she'd never been to Nashville before. So Chip's telling me she's coming down and she'd never been there. I'm like, Oh, I'm take them out. Like, we'll go out. We'll have a good time. Like, it's gonna be great. So we hung out all weekend and we're talking about different subject matter and what are we doing? We're relating. Right. And I took them to a very specific, they wanted barbecue. And mm. so I took them to my favorite barbecue place, which is this place way out on Charlotte, like off the 40, which has the mm. best baked beans. And it's like, it's fantastic. And I took them there and we're talking about the food, how good the food is. That's mm. congregating. Yeah. That we're connecting. We're talking that somebody's got an opinion on these cheese biscuits, you know, that, that is mm -hmm. good. And dip in the bean sauce, like, whoa, that's a whole nother, that's illegal in 32 states, but not in Tennessee. <laughs> Yeah. So you remember, Brent, when we talked about cracking the code of another genre a few episodes back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To a large degree, another way to state that is that each genre has a culture and you'd better know mm -hmm. it. You better know what's appropriate in the culture and what's not appropriate in the culture. And what is culture but a group of common interests and actions? Yeah. And knowing what they are. You want to find congregations? Go to Google and type in your keyword. Like if you got a song about Razorbacks, 
Mm-hmm. That's one of the terms you gave me here. You got a song yeah. about Razorback? Go to Google and type in uh, Razorback plus the word forum. You're mm-hmm. going to find a boatload of people. A bunch of them. That like Razorbacks. Go to Facebook, yeah. search in groups and search for Razorbacks. Mm-hmm. You're going to find a boatload of people there. I went to Delvin Darien High School. Population at the time, I think it was like 5,500, maybe 6,000 people. I think it's more like eight or 9,000 now. It's a growing faded map out. <laughs> yeah. There's a congregation for the class of 86. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> on, on Facebook. That's how granular can get. Is it Midwest? Yes. Is it Wisconsin? Yeah. Yes. Is it yes. Southeastern Wisconsin? <laughs> yes. Is it Delvin, Wisconsin? Yes. Is it Delvin Darien High School? Yes. Is it the class of 86? Yes. Mm-hmm. 186 people graduated like that year. So that's, see how granular you can get. Now, sometimes you can get granular when you're thinking about, I'm trying to demystify the marketing here, guys. It's just about mm-hmm. making connections. Everybody hears marketing and they, they feel like, you know, you're like, hey, do you want cancer? You know, <laughs> you, you want cancer? <laughs> no, 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 thanks. No, no, I'm good. I'm just going to go make this art for nobody that's ever going to hear it because I don't understand how to market. It's just mm-hmm. congregating. It's just talking with people. It's just connecting with people. And it's really easy to do when you're doing it under a common interest, right? And this is mm-hmm. what has to come first on digital before the music. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you an example like, of the congregation thing and the Razorback thing. So Justin Moore, country artist, several number ones, he's from Arkansas. And so that caught my ear when I first heard that. I'm like, oh, well, cool. You know, I'm from Arkansas. So there's immediately some you know, we don't know each other, but there's like a connection, like an affinity for like, a, automatically, I want to like this guy's music, right? Even before I've heard it, because he's, he's one of my people, right? Yeah. And Justin is a huge Arkansas Razorbacks fan. So you'll see him tweeting about games, you'll see him, you know, posting pictures on the sidelines and, and this kind of stuff. Like he is legit a hog fan. It makes me like him even more. Yeah. I like a good bit of his music. Yeah, but I'm even more predisposed to like him because we root for the same team on Saturdays, you know. And he's and he's emotional. He's a fan. There you, you go. Know? Okay. And you know, and that's like, yeah, you know, I want to like this guy. He's from the mothership. And I already do. Like, he's he's from the mothership. He's rooting for the Hogs. He knows how to pick Suey, you know. So hey, you know Matthew McConaughey, big Texas Longhorn. There you go. And so you know he's going and he's hopping up the football team for stuff. Makes me like McConaughey less, <laughs> but. Because we don't like to, you know. Okay, we, let's go. Don't like the Longhorns. Let's, but let's go down that road. For the people that love it, they re, they're like, he's my guy. Yes. Right. All right. All right. That's right. That's yeah. right. So let's go down that road for a second. Have you okay. met Justin Moore? No, I haven't met him yet. I haven't met him either. If you did, but if I do, I'm so, so going to bring up. What's the, the first thing car. you're going to bring up? Yeah, I'm like, big suey, baby. That's right. Now, That's a new goat. Have, have you met, met Matthew McConaughey? Think? This works both ways. Watch this. Have you met Matthew McConaughey? Oh, just a couple times. No, no, not yet. Okay, if you did, I tell you, if I did, here's what I bring it up. What's and I, if I was a Razorbacks fan, right? Because obviously yeah. you have a rivalry. Yeah, well, yeah, it's been a while, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's old hatred. I mean, I'm just you know. Well, so, <laughs> so, yeah, you'd be like, I, I, let's put, put it in a different context. I'm a huge Packer fan, and okay, our arch enemy, the the oldest rivalry in the NFL, all of the mm-hmm. NFL is the Packers and the Bears. Right. And so you know, we have two favorite teams in Wisconsin: the Green Bay Packers and whoever's playing the Bears. Exactly. Yeah. You know, when I meet people, I'm like, so. You're from Chicago? Yeah. You Bears fan? Of course. And I'm like, and you're telling people? <laughs> Are we we're talking about what they love? And it's just, and we just go, right, you can meet somebody rough and go right into it. Like, oh, you know, and then it's fun, right? It's fun and games. And now you're, yeah. all of a sudden it's opened up and you're talking. And you're, you're yeah. congr- I mean, I can do that with like Bama fans, right? Some of them are, are absolutely crazy, but everybody has crazy fans. But, you know, one of, my, some, one of my good friends, Neil Cody, he's an Alabama Crimson Tide fan. And he's my good buddy, regardless of that, even in spite of that. You know, so we'll talk about that stuff. We root for different teams, you know, but you can have respect and you can, you can be playful and not going to be a jerk to each other because that's not a good way to congregate. But we can congregate over football and stuff you'd be like guys come on is Saban ever going to retire so we can win again against Bama <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> that's right that kind of stuff and then boom conversations go on well you see okay so on that note like with the Bears thing I mean I can I can go hard to the paint knowing I got a little pressure relief valve right so I'll go hard to the paint with the how does it feel losing like you know if we're getting a little edgy like like that you know if it goes yeah. beyond that you're telling people that you're a Bears fan kind of a thing and they start yeah. to bow up I'll play with them a little bit and then I'll be like and this is coming from my heart 
you got to respect the Bears and you got to respect the Bear fans because in the Black and Blue League, which is or the Black and Blue Conference, which is Chicago, Green Bay, uh, Minnesota, and Detroit, there's only two teams that don't have a dome that play yeah, in the yeah. cold, that, that go out and fill up that stadium in the dead of winter. When we got a sh- I mean, we had to shovel out the freaking stadium in Wisconsin for a championship game in, in 1995 when, when uh, we were on our way to winning the Super Bowl. Brett Favre, like, we had a huge snowstorm the night before. We beat Carolina in the game and showed up to shovel out the stadium. Like, that's awesome. and, and that same thing would happen down in Chicago. So you can say, but, I, you know, truthfully, I, I got mad respect for you because – you know, you guys still didn't put a dome on and it's all about real football. This is the way, this is the way it's supposed to happen. And we're, yeah. the, the Packers and the Bears, oldest rivalry in the NFL, are leading by example in that regard. And, and that's something that can bring us all back around again. But we are talking about culture, congregation, something mm-hmm. that matters to him, something that matters to me. And we yeah, can find common not, ground. And it's not the music, right? So Justin Moore, it makes me want to like his music. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah. Like if I didn't know say who that, say that was, one more time. Did you catch it's that? It's not say about the music. Time. It's not about the music, but knowing that he and I have a common something we're passionate about, we're on the same side of, makes me want to like his music, even if I didn't already know. What? What? Uh, Did you? Because I'm like, obviously, he has great taste. See what I'm getting at here, artists. See what I'm getting at. How about songwriters? Like, if you got the opportunity, you run into to Justin Moore on mm-hmm. uh, on the street or in a bar or something like that and it's a moment where you can talk to him without gurming him what a great way to not gurm is go up and, yeah if you got talk an opinion he wants to talk about yeah and if you got an opinion on on razorbacks you can go one way or the other right and you can yeah. tell him you're going to start that conversation it's something he's going to be passionate about he's going to want to like mm-hmm. you because you're talking about something he wants to talk about you're not asking him for anything right and you can just create that relationship and who knows maybe that's a seed that's planted and if you're got some other relationships around town and you know what i mean that's how it starts to happen right and then all of a sudden he hears about you again like man is that the the guy that doesn't like the razorbacks like (laughs) or is that that the guy that loves the razorbacks too either way you talked about something that he loves you know i mean i tell you it's i was just talking to a writer just uh, earlier this morning and you know he's a lot of his cuts are coming. He's, you know, with like Christian artists, but also some country artists, uh, but people that he's good friends with. He's like, we have them over to the house kind of thing, you know, families or friends and that kind of thing. And we're talking about, you know, there are people I've written with that I'm like, yeah, I get good songs with this artist, but I don't know how much of a future there is for that because I don't think I'm going to be hanging on the bus. Like there's just not as much outside the room in common mm-hmm. with me and this artist. And just as people, how we live our lives and what's important. It's just like, you know, you just didn't, it didn't quite click. And like, we can write a heck of a song together. And hopefully that's good. But if I'm looking at that to invest my time in versus, you know, another artist who I really click well with and go, okay, we're simpatico as people and musically. Like that has a lot longer lifespan, I think. Mm-hmm. Because like, yeah, I would totally have this person over to the house. This other person, I'm not sure if they, you know, that would, they don't, probably don't want to come over. That sort of thing. And I think that that matters a lot. And so this writer I was talking to, somebody, yeah, a lot of his cuts, because he goes deep with people and they're like really good friends and they write a lot together and he's getting, and he's getting cuts that way as well. Right. And so that's, that's going to be based around culture. Are you from the same congregation? Yeah. You know, and, and, and find one, you know, find one that you are from, that you like. Mm-hmm. You're going to be more memorable as an artist to a fan, as a writer to an industry person, whether it's an artist or an AR person or a song plugger or a publishing company, if you can relate on that different level, you're going to be more memorable, right? And Mm -hmm. Brent, you and I were talking about, before we started the podcast, Brent's on the phone with his sister. She's talking about uh, this Tony Robbins thing. I just went and saw Mm -hmm. him last week. And one of the things I learned there was, by the way, brilliant. I mean, absolutely fantastic experience. One of the things I, I learned you retain more, you remember more when your emotions are higher than when they're low. Mm-hmm. I mean, he comes out, he's just asking everybody right from the beginning, like on a scale of one to 10, like 10, one is you're basically you don't have a heartbeat and mm-hmm. 10 is you are, you know, you are jumping up and down, you're ready to run a marathon, you, you're freaking out, so excited. Like it's like Christmas morning when you were five years old, like what level are you? Cause he came on at the end of the day, we'd been there all day and everybody's tired, mm-hmm. you know? And everybody's like, well, I'm about a six. He's like, this isn't going to work if you're a six. And so, he, and then he, of course, he does some things and gets everybody up to like, like a nine or a 10. Okay. Right, but yeah. when you, when you're talking with, 
in this case, as an example, we're using Justin Moore, talking to him about the Razorbacks, where does his emotion go from, right? Maybe he's at a six right then and there. Mm-hmm. But just like that, you can bring him up to a nine because, oh, I love that. Yeah. Because yeah. now you're making yourself more memorable. Mm-hmm. And it's not even about you. No, you're talking about what he loves. <laughs> so it is <laughs> right. the power of a congregation. Mm-hmm. You don't go with this? If you have, because, you know, it's not a great, I mean, I've, you know, I was at a thing and Trace Atkins was there and Trace had just been putting, putting out some killer songs. Like you're going to miss this. And I want to feel something some stuff. I really liked as, as songs, you know, and thought I'm going to go say hi to him, <laughs> you know? And, but it was about the music where I was going to talk about like, Hey dude, you've been putting out some great songs. I just, I appreciate that. You know, it was kind of where I was going with it. Just thank you. I'm not asking for anything, but you know, it came up and, but I started with like, Hey man, I'm just want to say hi. I'm a songwriter and, and you've been putting out some, just really great stuff lately. And I just, you know, appreciate the songs, you know, but man, the minute I said, I'm a songwriter, you could see the, you know, first of all, he's like eight, 12 tall. Yeah. And you know, you can just be like, oh, walls going up <laughs> defenses, you know, DEFCON four, <laughs> yep. you know, the second I, it wasn't even about that. I wasn't asking to give him a CD or, you know, whatever. But he doesn't know that. Him. Yeah. But he didn't know that immediately. He's like, Hmm, what do you, You're what do suspect. you want? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Suspect. And you just tell it immediately. And versus leading with a, something that's personal to him or some, you know, something that I think it would have been a different reaction. Then you're just leading as a person, not as a label. That's right. How can you use the power of the congregation to your advantage? Well, we've talked a little bit about it here, like in conversational and also targeting people, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, in two minutes, I asked you a total of, to give me a total of nine different answers, right? Small town, church, heaven, spork, truck, church pew, uh, Razorback, comic book, movies, and politics, yeah. So that's millions and millions of people right there oh, yeah. that you can connect with that have a common interest that can learn to appreciate your culture, something that you like and something that you like to talk about, something that matters to you, something that matters to them, even more important. Mm. And all of a sudden we're having, we're, we're on this other tangent that doesn't have anything to do with the music, but they're going to be prepared to like the music more. Right. Mm-hmm. When it comes time for them to find out or discover that that you're a songwriter or that you're an artist. And, you know, yeah. if you have a song and you've created a little video ad, OK, that is comprised of content that would be relevant and personal to a specific congregation, that th- this is much more powerful than radio mm-hmm. as far as because right now you're probably an unknown artist. If you listen to this right. podcast um, and you need to go from the unfamiliar to the familiar radio used to have an extremely amazing power to make the unfamiliar artist familiar because there was only two ways to consume music before the internet. You listen to what you owned or you listen to the radio. Yeah, that was it. So they could put new stuff in front of you. And uh, as a, as a consumer, and, you know, once again, remember, people, you have the curse of knowledge. If you're an artist, if you're a songwriter, you do not consume music the same way that the average listener does. That's right. Just the same way that uh, I am not a mechanic. So when I look at my engine, I see something totally different than a mechanic sees. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. You're right. Oh, yes. You know, I, where they're going to be like, well, you got a, you got a, you got a little tick in your flattle bottle here, right? Your sideline power block isn't connected to the Johnson rods and I can fix that for you, you know, and, or the way your web developer looks at your website, you know, they have the curse of knowledge. They don't have that. So, so th- there's something else that you've got to connect with them on. You've got a Trojan horse into them and get to know these people. And then you can get tremendous power from doing ads that contain content that is important to these people. And if it's relevant to the subject matter of the song, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you can get so amazingly granular with congregations and, you know, people get people get turned off because they've lost all patience with the overgeneralized mass media message. It doesn't speak to them if it isn't personal. This is what the the basis of in-depth targeting is. And targeting is something that you like. I I think I think every artist understands that you need to get those thousand super fans first. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, quit trying to swim a blue ocean. Go find the pond that they're in. Go find Mm -hmm. they're there. And, and you can find them based on sometimes, again, like subject matter of a song with Craig Gertis with, with, the, with the Haggard fan song. I wasn't going for country music. Like if we put that on country music radio, I don't know who we would have reached, you know, as far as like yeah. trying to break a new artist. But we found people that, are, you know, is it country music? Yeah. Is it 
traditional country music? Yeah. Is it outlaw traditional country music? Yeah. Is it Bakersfield outlaw tr- traditional mm-hmm. country music? Yeah. Is it, is it Merle Haggard? Yes. Okay, well, Merle Haggard fans would love this song called Haggard Fan. Right. It has my name on it, doesn't it? Like, it has the yes. fan's name on it. It's, it's personal. To, it was so easy in three months to get 2,000 downloads of that song and, and, and blow up his Twitter from 27 followers to 5,000 followers by finding the congregation of people that are going to relate to the subject matter of this particular song. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you a quick thing. I think it was on Fallon, but I was, you know, I was on YouTube and I saw that there was a, the cast of Avengers Endgame singing, we didn't start the fire, but like a parody version about the Marvel cinematic universe. Comic book movies is one of my jams, right? Cause I'm an old, I mean, growing up, I collected comic books. And I was all into Marvel and stuff. And, and so, I mean, I don't watch late night TV, so I don't watch Fallon. I don't have any problem with it. I just don't watch it. But that made me click quick as a hiccup. Cause I was like, <gasps> I love Billy Joel. Yeah. <laughs> I love We Didn't Start to Fire. That takes me back to junior high. And I'm hyped about some Avengers Endgame. Click. Yep. Done. Yeah. Right? Done. Done. I was all in. Why? Because I'm all about, you know, I'm about those things. Done. It's like, check, check, check. Power of a congregation made you click. I, and they bought, no, like, what, five minutes of your time, didn't they? Oh, it, well spent. Mm-hmm. And they bought that and they got that. And what are you looking for, artists? You're looking for attention right? Mm-hmm. You're looking for, you look for somebody to pay attention. This is how you do it. So if you think about a contractor, they have a general knowledge about a lot of stuff, but they're not experts in pouring concrete, running electricity, installing plumbing, putting up sheetrock. You know, if they did all of that themselves, it would take way longer to construct a building than if a contractor hired all these different specialized people to do what they need to do. And they're delegating the jobs to the experts. You know, I know a lot about plumbing, but this guy knows what just changed in plumbing yesterday. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> And what the new thing is. Why? Because that's all he does, right? Yeah. And this, this girl over here, like, you know, she's the, the interior design. And she, you know, I mean, it's just, it, there's experts everywhere. And there are people out there that, that have made millions of dollars using Facebook ads and have never run an ad on Facebook or Google because they don't know how. Mm-hmm. But they're delegating to get their products in front of new eyeballs and to sell their products and to, and to grow their brand. So here's the thing, guys, we can help you with this creation, we can help you with running of these ads. I mean, it's starting to come around. People are starting to understand this. We've got our first artist ever that really took the budget that they were going to use to go to radio and came to me. He said, John, mm. we're going to spend all this money with you and we want to spend it on Facebook because we're, we're going to get in front of more people and we're going to know who they are and we're going to be able to get in front mm. of them again. The same people that saw us the first time, we're going to know who they are and, and see them again. So that's the power of a congregation and we can tap into every different kind of congregation that imaginable using the data from Facebook and Instagram, guys. And this is the stuff that's going to move the needle. This is what's going to change your world. This is what's going to grow your audience. This is how come I can say... Every one of our artists that's been with us for at least six months has a bigger digital following of real people that engage in their posts. They have more fans than any artist that has a record deal that isn't famous. Yeah. Think about that. Okay. With that, guys, brings us to the end of another killer episode of The Climb. Reach out to us. This is the kind of stuff we can help you with. If you just want a consultation so you can try to, I mean, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take your money and consult with you about Facebook ads because it's sophisticated. It's, it takes, it's not rocket science, but it's sophisticated. I've spent mm-hmm. a lot of money and a lot of time trying to learn it. I can't get that over. You're not going to get any benefit out of it like in an hour or two on the consultation. <laughs> I can certainly tweak your social media and get you ramped up and you can see immediate results with that. Come to us for these ads. Let us show you what we can do bring us a budget and we can help you get the art and the artist in front of new eyeballs of people who care people who want to know people who are going to be interested in it and you'd be amazed at some of the stuff that we can cook up guys so with that you know once again join the climb community if you haven't done so subscribe to the podcast leave a five-star rating and review that helps other people know that we're legit and then finally share it with somebody let them know let them know what you think let them know you found value in this and i hope we didn't demystified congregations and culture and we're starting to get you to get your head around how this works when you get that culture cooking the cash registers will open up that the following will happen this is what you you're you're the preacher you got to find your flock that's what you got to do right so this podcast exists because we want you to win guys so keep on climbing and we'll see you at the top